Uh, hello everyone. So I haven't uploaded uh, any video to this channel for the past months. Um, however, I'm just uh, I will try to make a series on computer program tutorial uh, in the summer. So this series of tutorial will just uh, include from um, very basic algorithm like greedy algorithm, uh, greedy uh, searching, sorting up to dynamic programming or shortest path finding. Well, uh, I will just cover them all. I hopefully. Uh, so first we're gonna introduce what is CP. So CP stands for Computer Programming, uh, which is a field where people write code to solve some specific questions. Um, I think it's okay to be unfamiliar when you start. Uh, I mean, of course, everyone uh, is unfamiliar to a subject when they start. And I will just give you a, like uh, an example very uh, soon. So uh, I think one key thing you should do to improve yourself in computer programming is by doing competitions. Uh, you don't have to be too afraid of like trying them. Uh, I think it's like a really good ways to a good way to improve. So you should do uh good uh sorry code forces competitions google kickstart i called her dmoj uh use code cc when you have chance if you are if you are not too busy you can just do them and one question people often ask for computer programming is what language uh we should learn for computer programming so from my perspective i think uh c++ and java uh, the, uh, they both works so anything besides that like uh, i wouldn't suggest you to learn python or c c is pretty hard to learn but python however python is easier to learn but it's a uh, it's not, not so good in comment programming in some questions you couldn't even earn full marks using python just because it's slow language uh, for C++ and Java, I, I recommend C++ because uh, it's a bit simpler than Java when you write it, not, not saying you learn it. And uh, C++ has a better library, so which means you can just use stuff like sort easily when you want to store something, sort or uh, binary search like upper bound, lower bound. Unlike Java, you probably have to write them yourself. Okay. Now let's try to make an example. Uh, make a, an example of a of a, like a Euro computer programming problem. So let's see this one. So when you get a problem and you already has a title, of course, that and that is the most unimportant thing for the problem. So then you have a brief introduction of the problem. You can pause and uh, read everything here. And then you will just uh, get some input specifications that just tell you the format of the input and how an uh, output specification as well, it's just the uh, format of the output. So I think two most important things you should uh, look at is this part. So the problem statement and uh, the sample input and sample output. So, sample, uh, so the problem uh, in computer programming requires to write a code, a piece of code that is always uh, right, that always gives the right answer no matter what kind of input it is. So uh, they usually give you a sample input and a sample output. That's just an example. They will have contain more input and output in the test case where they grid your response and uh, to, to tell whether your thing is correct or not. So here we just have a really simple question. I hope you have already read the question and think about it. It's not hard. So we are just uh, trying to do a bunch of addition and we just print out the sum of two number every time. Okay, I will code our solution later. But before that, let's just go over some very important concepts like how to do input and output in Java. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to mention, I'm doing this series of tutorial in Java because I think uh, Java has a, uh, a wider user basis for beginners because I think many uh, beginners from for competitive programming are actually coming from AP Computer Science. 
and AP Computer Science is taught in Java. So uh, even though I like C++ better, I'm just going to teach in Java for the theory. So in Java, you can use scanner or buffer reader. So you, do, you just scan, uh, scan in uh, an integer or a string or anything. So string is next line and uh, integer is just next in. Oops. So that's uh, that's a way to take it, uh, take in the input. Now let's do other stuff. So let me just introduce some data types and data structures. So the most basic ones are lint, long, double, float, string, char. So let's go over them one by one. So int it is the integer. It is the data uh, type that stores integer. Integer it is one, two, three. I hope you know what integer is. And long is pretty much the same as integer. I'm uh, sorry, int, except for a store bigger number because it has a bigger memory. Float is a uh, is a type that stores floating point numbers, and double it is a bigger thing for float, which is like long for int. The next one is float. Uh, float is just floating point numbers like one point one, one point two. Next one is string. String is a series of chars. And char is just, uh, a character like A, B, C. Or 1, 2, 3. A single character is a char. You can use it to store. And string essentially is an array of chars. So it contains multiple chars. So it can be like this. Multiple chars. There can also be spaces because space essentially is also a char. And next one, let's introduce an uh, array. Array is just essentially like a bunch of elements being together. So you can have like int, uh, int array, just to me int. And you specify, uh, specify a length for the int array. So at first, you should specify the element, the type of element you want to have in the array. So you uh, type in like uh, brackets, so the computer know you are doing, uh, you are making an array. Then you give it a name, and then you just do the classic Java new int, blah, blah, blah. And that's the essential, uh, I think that's the essential Data structure gonna know, and you can also use it. You can also do like double array, string array, just by doing this. Pretty much the same, except for you change the element. It can be any length, so it can be three, it can be thirty-one, it can be whatever. Okay. So let's go to if else. So if else is just essentially conditional statement. So if a condition is met, so if there's a condition and something is met, then just, just perform operation here, blah, 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 blah. Rest on code and just do it for you. Okay, let's go to the next section. I assume you guys have already known this stuff because that's pretty basic uh, programming knowledge. If you guys don't know it, it's okay. It's not hard. You guys can just uh, watch some other YouTube videos. I will put some useful link in description. Uh, like um, I forgot that guy's name. Yeah, you guys can just check in the description. And loop essentially just uh, it just like if else statement, but if the condition is met in is met, it just rep repetitively do things. So if something is met, so condition. Um, uh, so then you just try to do something, something. Um, you try to do iteratively do that thing until the condition is not. Met. So that's a well loop. For loop is also like that. So you have like three parts. So here is a condition, 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 and here this part is initialization. I mean, it shouldn't be initialization. It's just like the initial statement that is being performed when you create a, when you do it for loop. So it can be int i equals to zero or anything. 
you can even leave it blank. And the last part is the change you want to make. So it can be I++ or anything. It's usually some, so I'm going to write a euro for loop. So it's usually like I equals to zero, I is smaller than a number, and I++. Plus plus. So this loop will just loop that number of times. Okay, so I have went over like the most basic stuff in computer programming, like the most basic programming tricks. And now let's solve the question which I, I, I used as an example. So we already taken the first number. So we use a for loop to loop n times. Oops. And each time we'll print out some stuff. Print line. Scan def next plus scan dot next int. Okay, I hope that do the trick. That's the main answer. Oops, my internet is pretty slow. Oh, okay, it just did the test case. So as we see, we got all the test cases. Uh, so when if a grader uh give you like false score, it really means your code is work workable because the grader usually just run a, a tons of tests and uh, if they all works it means your code is working so that is for the most content of this video and in the end i'm just gonna say uh in future i will also go over some like uh important algorithms in content programming like searching algorithms uh bfs and dfs Binary search, shortest pass algorithms, dynamic programming. Mm, yeah, hopefully I can mm, produce them all before the summer end so you guys can study it. Yeah, uh, so that's it for this video. Bye.